Lumbar epidural. Lumbar epidural, real common procedure. Low back pain, uh, you have a bulging disc. A lot of people have bulging discs, and we talked they can be really without symptoms, or they can hurt a lot. It depends on the inflammatory component and a lot of other potential problems. And uh, accompanying that three joint complex are two joints in the back. Two joints called facets, F-A-C-E-T, can push in or encroach on the segmental nerve. Just like the disc can push in and encroach on the segmental nerve, you might have a herniated disc. You might have a disc that is pushing out and rubbing on the nerve. Okay, we might have all sorts of irritation in here and inflammation and irritation is what causes pain. It's an inflammatory response. So there's um, a potential to be improved with a lumbar epidural as one of the most common procedures we see in interventional pain medicine and one of the most common procedures we see with low back problems. Why? Because it's what we call minimally invasive. It's really safe. It's, I'm not going to say any medical procedure is 100% safe, but bleeding, infection, nerve damage, stroke, seizure, death, yeah, all those things can happen. It's pretty uncommon. Um, talk it over with your healthcare professional. Talk it over with the qualified interventionalist. Talk it over with someone that you trust, but what drives me crazy is when I have a patient come in that says, ah, Talk to somebody and damn near died. They died. They died on the table because they had that needle in their back. Now, I'm sure it's going to happen. Anything can happen. But uh, I've done tens of thousands of these. And the most common complication is we can put the needle in just a little too far and nick an area where fluid can leak out. That's called a dural violation. What a name. Or it's called a wet tap. It's like a myelogram. When we put the needle in for a myelogram, we actually go through that thing called the dura, durable. And it goes in there and a little fluid leaks out. We have a fix for that. So when you go in and you talk to your healthcare professional that's going to be doing this, we need to make sure a few things can happen. First of all, it's going to be done under x-ray. It's going to be done under x-ray guidance where we look at a screen and we know where we're going. The next thing we need to know is how are you going to do it? Well, in a broad brush stroke, if you're just having back leg pain, nondescript, you may do an interlaminar epidural. That's between the two joints here in this area called lamina. Interlaminar. Or you could go way to the side and there are some real smart people at University of Chicago that found that you can get the medicine off to the side and have a real good result if your pain just goes to one leg or it lateralizes. That's what we mean, lateralizes. Or if one disc or one part of your back is pushing out and it looks like it has a relationship to a nerve, a segmental nerve, that we can identify, it may be worth putting medicine right there on that nerve, a dense application of drug on that nerve called a transforaminal injection. Here we go. Frame as a whole, trans, obvious. You're going into the hole, putting the drug right there. But those smart people in Chicago said if you went way off to the side here, you may be able to get the same kind of result. They have different risks, they have different results, and they can do different things. For example, obviously, if you put local anesthetic on a nerve, just like the dentist puts raw chronography in your your leg can be a little dumb. So you always have a driver for any of these procedures. Your leg can get numb, you can get a little numb in the back, and you just don't want to have a problem. Uh, you know, I've seen it in my career. I've seen people say, yeah, I got a driver. They really don't, they have, a tr they have trouble on the way home. And you don't want to have that floppy foot uh, pulling up to a red light or a train signal. So this is the deal. We're going to apply drug in an area that we think is most beneficial 
under x-ray for precision guidance by an experienced individual that didn't take a weekend course that has the ability to treat potential complications. In other words, if we happen to nick that little area, it's less than 1%, it's way less in experienced hands. If we can go in there and do something about it, and we can fix it, usually, and get right around to it. So if you, if you have post-procedural problems, uh, it's a good idea to not only have the number of your interventionalists or staff, but also have kind of a low threshold to go into the ER if you need to. I mentioned bleeding, infection, nerve damage, stroke, seizure, death. Well, uh, bleeding. We used to take people off of blood thinners for procedures like this. And we're rethinking that to some degree. The risk reward benefit of coming off the blood thinners <laughs> may exceed the risk of having a problem doing the injection, especially in experienced hands. So that is a good conversation. Never leave meds out, even over the counter. Some of these over the counter herbs and supplements can be a problem with the bleeding system. And aspirin, mention that. At, take, tell them if you take a lot of anti inflammatories. If you're on a blood thinner for uh, a specific reason from your doctor, tell them about it. Uh, and you'll decide. And it's an important conversation to have. Okay? Bleeding, infection, nerve. Yeah, infection can happen. It's rare, very rare. But if it does happen, uh, you'll notice fever, a lot of back pain, and you want to have a low threshold to either go into the ER or talking it over the phone to, to talk through it. I mean, don't just have a script. Have specific words available to you, like uh, my temperature is spiked, I have fever, chills. Know that we, we do want to know what's going on if you're having a problem. But then again, any procedure is going to have some, I guess, associated either discomfort or uh, expected side effects. Just got to talk it over. Okay, this is what we're doing. We're putting local anesthetic or local anesthetic and steroid or just steroid in there. And there's some good work that shows that <laughs> when we went way back to first doing these with cocaine, uh, that, and cocaine's a local anesthetic, if you didn't know it, and it's, it's not illegal in the medical practice. It's a Schedule II drug, but you can use it, but we don't use it down here anymore. Um, local anesthetic may be as effective as steroid. So steroids carry their inherent risk, local anesthetic carries their inherent risk, they're really very manageable. Okay, so what we do is we lay down, clean your back with a uh, antiseptic. If you're allergic to iodine, let us know. Got other alternatives as an antiseptic. We take an x-ray. If you're going to be any risk of pregnancy, and you know who you are, uh, let us know. Because this is x-ray. That thing's an x-ray machine. It's low-dose x-ray. The actual x-ray exposure is very minimal. A good interventionalist for lumbar epidural will usually be oh, one second or less. Now, the caveat to that is there's another way to approach an epidural from down here in the tailbone. Topic for another day. That takes a little more fluoro. It usually takes some contrast Sometimes we put contrast, and some people call it dye, in here. They'll ask you if you're allergic. Unlikely. Little tiny amounts. So we put the medicine in, and we usually have you recover. Now, there are a number of facilities that use a little bit of sedation, which is fine. A little bit of benzodiazepine, like Versed, something like that. That's a Valium-like drug or a little bit of fentanyl, which you've heard of as an opioid. It's pretty potent. And that's fine too, because it's usually monitored. It should be monitored. 
and there's somebody standing at the head of the bed watching you looking at the monitor uh, that's responsible it's okay but it usually takes longer to put the monitors on and to start the IV than to do the epidural the epidural is done under local anesthetic you should feel pressure I had that epidural and about damn near died well it shouldn't be uncomfortable it should be um, pressure you'll feel a little pressure if you heard a little twinge here and there just ask for a little local anesthetic local anesthetic is uh, a very effective and you shouldn't have to use sedation to overcome technique follow that so just ask your injectionist what are my options and if you're very anxious your first one or something like that that's fine I've used sedation all my career for some folks and it's okay it's not a big deal but just know that this is one of those procedures generally isn't needed so okay that has its own set of risks but small nerve damage stroke seizure death very very unlikely the nerve damage could come with the transforaminal where the nerve could be tickled or it could be injured I suppose from the needle that is something that is recognized as a complication rare and there's a small little vessel in here sometimes that needle can get in the vessel and it can cause problems with stroke but it's generally speaking not an issue in experienced hands using contrast and careful technique anything can happen yes talk it over with your interventionalist experienced interventionalist next a different story we'll talk about that so this is what we've done we've laid you down x-ray numb medicine goes in to the predetermined place we're gonna put the needle here 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 there's other places to put it the point is this we're dealing with a three joint complex facet facet disc adding a medicine in there that either is going to cover a broad brush stroke or be site specific specific to the nerve segmental nerve coming out of that foramen specific to what you tell us history physical medical decision making so all right the point of an epidural is to improve your function and quality of life it should follow conservative management it should help minimize escalation of controlled substances we all want that and that includes opioids benzodiazepines and might be muscle relaxers or other meds uh, it should be something that is available it's not a labor epidural yeah they're called epidurals and that's a red car and that's a blue car they're cars that's a Ferrari <laughs> this is a very specific procedure and it can't be mistaken for a different type of procedure like a lumbar epidural for labor or for post-operative pain other reasons so for pain this is a common procedure safe in experienced hands with proper informed consent you talk over the risk complications and options the educated informing or teaching into a specific area with a plan doing the right thing for the right reason and you'll have a good day how many do we do well that depends there is no three epidurals there is no four or five six seven there isn't there isn't that monthly epidural it's what you need so it isn't an automatic three epidurals if you do well after one one and done uh, you might need two it's you know kind of an accelerated need maybe we're making some progress we're getting there less leg pain better range of motion able to sit longer take less medicine better quality of life and um, that's a point 
So be aware that everybody's different. And I mean, everybody's different. Now, I get surprised all the time. People come in with spines that look like they are twisted and bent, and there's no way that we're walking with any happiness. And they're fine. <laughs> they get one epidural and they're fine. And we don't see them for two to three months. So the lumbar epidural is a very strong utility as a broad brush stroke to be utilized in pain control in the low back in a minimally invasive environment to enhance function and quality of life. Uh, I don't know if it delays surgery. It might. I don't know. Everybody's different. I don't know if the surgeon is going to plan to go ahead if this is a big failure. That's something you talk to the surgeon about. I don't know if you go back to physical therapy. Everybody is different. Sometimes a surgeon will say, hey, just block this nerve. I think that's the right nerve where I need to operate. May have to do that. Everybody has a reason for doing their approach here. Be the informed consumer. You're going to do great.